Hey guys, I thought I'd show you some work in progress as I'm creating some new design magic inserts. And uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. So first I did this sketch on one of my LCD writing tablets. It's uh, like a, what, a $30 tablet you just draw on with a pencil. You hit a button and it erases everything. And I just want to uh, work on obtuse angled shapes, which are pretty interesting. And the idea is that you want to create these shapes that have you know six, seven sides, maybe eight and are using mostly obtuse angles. There's not very acute angles in here. And I like to try and keep a right angle or two in each one of these. And sometimes it's nice to have X and Y, you know, straight across as well, but just trying to create some different shapes that I can use to create some inserts with. The other thing to keep in mind is no symmetry and don't and use different lengths of lines. When I import this, I import it using file, you know, import, you know, images planes. And I just grabbed the PNG. So that's the file. I, I posted it up here on my Discord. We have a section called Design Patterns. And I, uh, I basically just created this little sketch and scanned it in with my phone and stuck it up here. So I import it and I'm looking down at it from the top. And uh, let's take a look at what I did. So when it came in, it was just this, right? It looked just like this. So that's what it looked like. And uh, what I did was... Let's just go ahead and delete these. With uh, making sure that Node Wrangler is turned on. Okay, so basically what I'll do is I'll Shift A and add a transparent shader there. And then with the Control and Shift key held down, I'll right click and drag and it'll give me this mix shader. And with this set up, now I can just kind of go all the way down and lot. Now, now as I dim, you're gonna see that I've already gone in here and added these images and it's really easy. It's all one object. I mean, I, I've traced over this image. It's all one object. And I just grab, you know, I can just grab a vert. And uh, if you're saying, well, how do I get to a vert? Um, let's, let's tab back out and just say, I, uh, I'm gonna go up here and lock this down obtuse. Okay, so shift A, mesh plane, and then tab into it and then hit one, just like the vertex more, and then say merge by uh, at center. And now I have a vert and now I'm, I'm in E mode and I can just easily just go G, move it around here, hit the E button and just trace over whatever I want, right? And then when I want to fill it in, I select these two, hit F, and then I select all of these, and I can just use the L key, just hover over any one of these, hit the L key, and then hit F again, and I'll get a face, and that's tab it out. So I'm gonna X out of that, I don't want that. So that's really where I, where, I'm, where I am right now. So if I look at this, you'll see that I have dimmed it down quite a bit so that I can easily trace over and get my shapes. So I come in here to these vertices, and actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna adjust them to 0.5, all, the, all of them to 0.5. And I don't go all the way to one, and I'm gonna explain that here in a second. So I'm gonna tab out of here, and we're gonna go into uh, the bevel, add a bevel modifier, and we're gonna vertices, and let's grab eight, so you can see. Now I can adjust this, so I can adjust this up and down. Now the reason why you know, I added this limit method to weight, notice that weight and angles, not, you know, with, with, with angle, I can adjust it. I can adjust everything the same also, but with weight, I get a chance to come in here and I can say tab and I can grab one of these and I can adjust it higher, right? So now that's larger than these are. So that's what the reason for that. But uh, let's go into tab. I'm gonna select all of these and put it to zero because I can't adjust them all at once unless they're at zero first. And then we'll go 0.5 and now we're, now we're good. And then with that set, I'm gonna adjust this to where I think they look about optimum for what we're doing. So then I'll add a weld modifier, and you're saying, well, why would you do a weld modifier? And I'll show you in a second, is that if I don't do a weld modifier and you go in and you adjust it really large, uh, you're gonna get double vertices on these areas, but the weld's gonna fix those double vertices. So I'm gonna you know, come back, we'll come back and just adjust this down there, something like that. Okay, so that's for that. Now I'll tab in here, I'm gonna hit A and hit F for face, and I've got them all, oops, uh, you can see that I have my face orientation turned on, and that's important because I want to make sure that I see the faces that are flipped. And so then I can go two or three to get in my face mode and just select the faces I want. And I've got, you know, I can go into uh, mesh and normals and flip them. And I have that to a Q key, so I have flip right here in my quick favorites. So anyway, so there's that. Now let's go ahead and save where we're at. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is with this done, I wanna make these solids. So I've got the weld and I'm just gonna go say add modifier and I'll make a solidify. Remember this is still just one object and I'm gonna set the solidify offset to be zero. So it's going half in and half out and I'm gonna just jack it up to something like, maybe like that here. That'll be good because that can be, these can be some 
cut, some kind of thing that can just cut cut into cut into something. And then I always give it my SY cutter surface uh, material because that's what we use when we create inserts. And with that done, now uh, I'm going to basically go in here, tab into them, hit A to select everything, right? And with everything selected, and I can turn off. Let's turn off these in the modifiers. I'm going to turn off these so that when, they don't show when we're in the edit mode. With everything selected, I'm going to say P and separate. I think it's under here somewhere also. So this is under uh, the mesh separate, and I want to say by loose parts. So I've just created one, two. I've created a whole bunch of loose parts, right? So now I've got uh, now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now I'm going to select all of these, and I'm going to say set origin. Uh, origin to geometry. So now it puts the origin point at every single one of these. And so we're in pretty good shape. We're getting close. So I'm going to basically save this and I'll go to my kit ops and basically I just hit the create insert button. And then uh, Alt G is going to move it to the center of the scene. First, let's say, do we want this to be a solid or a cutter or a uh, union? Well, let's start off with a solid. So we'll say save insert and I'm going to go to my design magic collection. I'll go into solids and I'll add this as obtuse dash 01 and I'll save the insert and I'll say camera to insert and then I will hit the zero numpad zero key that's going to be my thumbnail and I'll say that's fine render thumbnail close factory scene and there we have it and so let's grab the next one so we're looking at from the top like if we're going to read so we're going to go across this way. So we'll grab this one and we'll say create insert again and I'll do Alt G to move it to the center and then save insert and we'll go into the same place DM solids and I'm going to say obtuse 2 and then camera to insert render thumbnail close factory scene grab this one and we'll keep on doing this and I'll just go ahead and speed through this. But I'll do I'll do one more here and then I'll go ahead and speed through the rest of them. So I'm going to Again, create insert, Alt G, save insert, increment this one, save it, camera to insert, and render thumbnail, close factory scene. Okay, and now I'm gonna go ahead and create these as union objects. And so the way I do that is I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna go in again. We're gonna do all of these again, and I'll say create insert and Alt G to move it to the center. And now I'm gonna go to cutter and I'm gonna make this a union cutter. And I'm gonna save the insert and now I'm gonna go up and into my uh, union, which is the plus, and I'm gonna call this obtuse-01 and save it there. And camera to insert, render thumbnail, close factory scene. So one thing I noticed when I was uh, looking at these is there's a couple things. One is that I can barely see that thumbnail, which isn't very good, so I'll have to fix that. The second thing uh, is that I'm not using the plus nomenclature, which I need to do. So I'm gonna go back in and fix that. So we just saw where the thumbnails don't look very good. So let's show you one way that you can change that. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna say create insert and Alt G, move it to the center, turn it into a union and then save it, and we'll save it in the M1 and obtuse 01 with the plus sign in front of it. And now, with that done, camera to insert, and zero on the numpad, and you can see when we hit the Z button, it kinda just disappears. You're not gonna be able to see it. So another thing I can do is I can just hit the solid button here, and now I can render this as a solid. Even though it's a union, this will render out fine as a solid. So I just hit the solid button, and then I'll say, render thumbnail, and then close factory scene. And so that's what I'm gonna end up doing, right? So let's go Z, let's go ahead and finish these up. So I'll grab the second one here, create an insert, Alt G to move it to the center, save the insert, let's increment it one, save insert, oops, you turn it into a, a, a union, and we just save it. Okay, and so that, that gives it the same, the same uh, save file. And then I want to say here, uh, turn it to solid, camera insert, render thumbnail, close factory scene. Okay, so now we're back. 
And now let's just go ahead and do the different ones in there. It's gonna be kind of a similar workflow and I'll just go in here and say, create insert, Alt G again. This time I'll turn it into a cutter with a difference. You'll see that little red button because I have my face orientation turned on. So it shows it's being red. And then I'll save the insert and I'm gonna grab this one and then I'm gonna move it to up one to DM minus and I'm gonna change this to a minus, minus obtuse 01 blend. And I'll save the insert, camera insert, render thumbnail, close factory scene. Let's do that one more. Create insert, Alt G, cutter, save insert, DM minus, Just increment that one, save insert, and then I'll do camera to insert. And this, this time I'm gonna show you what the thumbnail looks like. Turn this off. And that's what our thumbnail will look like. And I say, uh, render the thumbnail. Okay, so now we're done. I'm gonna go ahead and save this file and I'll create a new file. And here's our new file. And let's go into our minus ones, for instance. And we're gonna see right down in here, we have obtuse one. These are all obtuse. And what's nice about these is that now I can just come in here and uh, let's turn off snapping here. And we're gonna add an insert and we'll just move it around. So I can basically find the right angle that I want. So I might stick this one here. Let's turn off face orientation and hide that a little bit. So, uh, and I'll show you there. So what I just did here, by the way, is I used my Control Alt shift in the Z button. And that allows me to toggle between a box, bounding box preview, a solid preview, and a wireframe preview for this object. And if I go into my preferences and I look down, I have this KitOps toggle VP display. And that's an add-on that comes free with KitOps Free and KitOps Pro. And you just uh, basically install it like you do anything else with the install button, turn it on, and it'll give you the ability to do that with any object, right? So I can, I can, I can just do any object that way. And so if I don't want to see all these little, these little things, I can just do this and just turn it off like that. So that's kind of cool. So, uh, and I can add this. So I can just go in here. Let's just grab another one. Let's grab that one. Let's grab this one. Now, as I'm doing this, I can all hold the alt key down and I can just, I can move it around if I want, right? So I can, position this however I want by by spinning the mouse wheel the you know but and holding the alt key down I can move it to however I want this to be so and by just rolling the mouse button I just actually end up making it larger or smaller right so I can you know again it's like like playing a puzzle game right here so I'm just trying to find a you know find a match for this so that I can kind of figure out what's going on so that that might be kind of nice there Okay, so I've got this done. Now I might just come in and I got a little funky one there that I might add something to. I might just take and start adding some of these 16 sided bullets, these little tiny ones. They're kind of cool. So I'll just drag these in here and keep in mind that as you drag these around, uh, once you set the size, KitOps will remember it the next time you, you start dropping in things, right? So, you know, if I come in here and drag this in something like, I don't know, like, like this, and then I hit uh, add insert, again, it's gonna just remember that particular size that we just set that at. I can also hold the shift key down right before I click. If I'm in smart mode, let's try that again. I can also hold the shift key down right before I click while I'm in smart mode. And watch shift, and I can just keep on adding them, you know, rotating around whatever I want to do. Anyway, you get the idea. So this is basically our object. I'll come in here now and maybe, uh, here, let's add a bevel modifier there, bevel. 
Yeah, we're getting a little tiny one. It doesn't look like it's a very big one. I can go and just drag it to the very top and I'll get a much bigger bevel. And then I'll add another bevel on top of that one and drag it to the top. And we're gonna give this, a, it's gonna be a real tiny one, something like that. And the segments are gonna be eight. And we'll just add a free kit ops material and render in cycles. And you can see what this is what this is looking like. So it's kind of cool. Now another neat neat thing you can do here is uh, I can you know I can select any of these. All right, you know let's say let's say I select this one right here, and I'm going to add a bevel modifier to it. So I've already got the first one, the weld and the solidify. I'm going to add another bevel modifier to the bottom of it, and. And you'll see that I'm getting this little chamfer cut right in the bottom, right? And if I want to do that for all of them, I just select all of my cutters, just like this, with this one being the last one, the one that we've added that last bevel, bevel modifier. And I'll go under Object, Make Links, and Modifiers. And now they all have that bevel on them. And so you can see how that works. It's nice. And I can hit the Z button. And we have it pretty nice object. Let's get something a little darker here. Let's do like a dark anodized. Here we go. So you get the idea. Okay, there's one more thing I want to show you. Uh, let's go into the top view. Let's turn this off here. And one of the cool things about this uh, technique that we just created was that if I want to edit this, I can just come in here, select the insert, tab into it, We'll go into wireframe, hit one, hit A. And here's our object, right? So if I want to basically bring this, I can just say, okay, I'm going to bring this over and match that. I may take this one. I'm going to match, you know, match that. Maybe move this over here a little bit, you know. So I can continue to adjust these as I, as I like. I mean, uh, you know, then hit tab. And now, you know. Here we have, you know, we just, we just modified this you know, that quickly. And that's one of the really nice things about this non-destructive process. You create these inserts. After you drop them in, you can continue to edit them. So that's that's good stuff. One, one last thing I'll mention real quick is that with this with our object selected, let's just go ahead. Notice we have some, some shading artifacts. We'll just go ahead and add a weighted normal at the very end of it and make sure we have keep sharp and face influence. And that, everything just gets nicely rounded out. So hope you enjoyed that and uh, we'll see you online. Bye.